Good afternoon, NOSA community. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. Again, my name is Shamika Jones, and we're going to talk more about our topic of the month, which is small teams. So if you haven't gotten a chance to check out our other video regarding how to create a small team, check it out here on our channel. But definitely feel free to also come back and finish watching this video as well. So welcome. And let's get started as well. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do so so you can get updates as well as click the bell to the right to get notifications of new content. Small teams. So I mentioned in the last video, we all as small business owners many times start our business off in small teams and there's nothing wrong with it. And then there's also a lot of amazing companies that continue their business and grow and flourish in small teams. So today's topic is about how to delegate activities when you're working in small teams. It's not such a inherent thought process that you would know what to do once you thought you were ready to start your own business with regards to managing others, especially if it's something that you haven't done in previous roles. So let's talk about a few tips in this quick guide to delegate activities. When working with small teams, it's important to learn how to organize. So organization is a big, big part of small business. And you'll hear me touch on it throughout our series here on small teams. But you wanna make sure that you're organized so that you're able to really delegate appropriate activities that kind of correspond with your intended goals. What is delegation? So it consists of transferring responsibility over a task to someone in order to decrease your own workload. And they can include delegation can help small teams to create autonomy, be useful in building trust. It's a great team building um, activity as well as increased pro productivity. So here we have some tips for you to make this process a lot easier. So some things that small teams need is a person who leads the team, but that person has to be intuitive enough to identify the team member's strengths. So a lot of different companies do it in various ways to make sure that we're able to put the individual in the places where they work the best. And it's not to say that there won't be tasks or assignments or activities that may not be of much interest, but with limited resources, you don't want to have a person who doesn't have specialization or experience in accounting working in your accounting team when there may be a better fit for your sales or marketing team. So you always want to be aware of your team member's strengths and assign them the task that fits them the best based on their experience. The second thing is you always want to think through, and this is something I did as I started the journey into adding more team members. And I share probably in the virtual assistant video uh, about how I went through a couple of different virtual assistants. And you always want to differentiate between the things you can do. So the things that are key, important, you don't want anyone else in the organization doing versus the things that you can assign. And a lot of ways to do that is around writing down what you're doing all day, like taking out the time on any individual day or a couple of days to list the individual tasks that you may be doing. It may be um, cold calling. You might be attending networking or um, community types of events. You may be going out to conferences or meeting with facilities. So those are all different tasks or assignments that you could be doing. But a couple of them are things that other people can do or at least start the process on and maybe you can follow up on, whether it's the cold calling. I know a lot of nurses have um, various types of roles where the person makes like the initial call to get the right contact, the right name, the right phone number, the right address um, for facilities and healthcare systems, or even just doing the research. That's definitely something that most um, administrative personnel can do for you. That's something that I would for sure delegate to them. And then when we talk about like business development, accounting, more specialized skills, I think that you should also delegate those as it's appropriate. Uh, we recently had a post in the group around um, the concept or the quote of entrepreneurs biggest hurdle in business is that they want to do everything. 
And I really agree with that quote, but I think it's important to understand it in its truest sense in that sometimes you have to do everything, right? But doing everything is different than learning the business. So you need to learn your business. You need to learn how every piece of your business works, but you also need to be in tune enough to know when it's time to delegate those tasks like accounting or human resources or recruiting or compliance or credentialing to another individual or system because those are tasks that can be easily trained on learned and completed by someone else where you can focus on the business development side of your business so take into account that if you are asking someone to do something new that it might take a while so that time piece is really key so like when you're having whether it's virtual assistants or in-house assistants or administrative staff or accounting or marketing staff do tasks for your business if they don't have a clear understanding of how healthcare works which i believe healthcare, especially the staffing piece is a little bit of a unicorn you really have to take out the time in the beginning and maybe sometimes throughout to explain to them the industry um i like to use examples and comparisons to help people get it um Healthcare looks different throughout the country, and then it also looks different throughout the world. So to kind of assign one viewpoint of it can be challenging. So that's why I mentioned you may have to revisit it a couple of different times. So because of the industry's uniqueness, you really have to just have your initial conversations with people working for you around how the business works, how the industry works before you touch on too many of the details about the business. Number three, you always wanna clarify why you're assigning the task um, and highlight the reason you believe your team member will shine doing so. So many times team members, especially if they're early on in their careers, they may not know all their strengths and weaknesses. So if you haven't done an assessment of that, it's always a great idea to really think about doing a team, be team building activity um, it can be done virtually typically or individually to kind of help people see the areas that they have the greatest strengths in. But when deciding to, uh, to put people on specific tasks, you want to put a person who you believe, even if they don't, can do that task well and shine while doing so. And then number four, which is my favorite by far, be clear about the results. So. Three of the things that we touched on in the last video that I talked about on small teams was systems. So having systems or technology in place that really allows you to communicate with your staff members effectively, you know, that creates an environment where you can assign tasks. I gave the example of Trello. Um, and then you also want some sort of system that kind of allows you to hold them accountable for either their work, their time, a combination of both, which was um, the tracking system. So being clear about results is really important because if the person is new to the industry, they may not know the expected outcome. So you explaining that to them really allows them to be able to meet that expectation. Um, and when we talk about clarity, I'm talking about time frames, specific outcomes. If you have examples, that's always great so that they know, hey, by the time you finish this spreadsheet on cold calling, I want to know the dates, the time, the feedback by the end of by Friday. Um, or even doing any sort of social media, hey, we want posts to either mirror these types of posts or have this type of messaging include this type of information and it be done on a weekly daily basis so all that information is important and you want to make sure that in asking and telling um, individuals about their assignments and what the expectation is that you're giving clear and specified um, instructions so it sometimes this number four may take some people some time to get through, especially in your business operations, like your schedulers and administrative staff, your human resources and accounting staff, where um, the result may not always be straightforward or the need might change, but being straightforward with your instructions is really important. 
Um, number five, use a proper organizational tool in order to keep track of the activities, deadlines, and priorities. So this goes back to being organized as you guys hear the theme over and over again. So software like Asana or Trello are really helpful in these things. Um, having some sort of office program, whether it's Microsoft Office or G Suite, where everybody's able to communicate via email or some sort of messaging tool internally within your organization. And then, of course, most platforms have a um, tracking system where you can track kind of the work that was done, time was spent on it so that you can make sure that you're, you know, delegating tasks appropriately. And then number six, which is a nice one as well, is to make sure that you delegate not only tasks, but also authority over them. So depending on your organizational structure, this may or may not apply, but typically in teams, providing a lot of autonomy is really great because it allows the person a little bit of flexibility and to continue to um, be a part of the overall organization beyond the individual role that they play. So um, some things that we do here at the NOSA Group that works for us is that I do offer a lot of authority over creativity or coming up with things. Um, I'm really big as far as giving like the overall vision and specific goals in mind, but I do provide a little bit of flexibility um, for my team members to explore like it says before things that they're strong in. um the example i would i would give here is this new change to our logo um my virtual assistant for social media she did this on her own so it wasn't something that was requested um she saw a need she had a little bit of extra time and once she was complete with it she shared it with me and kind of the intention behind it and i think it's been fantastic so giving you know, activities and tasks and things like that are always great, but you also want to give people flexibility to, you know, share ideas or ways that we can improve processes, as well as um, encourage collaboration, which is also something that I definitely love to do. Um, so that, hey, getting a second pair of eyes is always nicer than one, so that they can provide insight or information to each other. And then number seven and eight. So you want to make sure to stay involved in the process. So making comments and giving feedback, that's always a winner. You can't go wrong with that. I will say, and probably next year we'll do a presentation on it, but constructive feedback, constructive criticism is a skill set. So it's not something that people um, innately know how to do, but in the process, you always want to make sure that you're communicating, communicating, communicating what they're doing so that they can continue to go in that right direction. So you always want to give feedback and directions. You always want to acknowledge your team members um, as much as possible throughout the year. I know as we're rolling into Christmas, many times people focus just on this holiday time of the year, but you really want to acknowledge your people throughout the year so that they know that their contribution to your organization is important and, of course, appreciated. And then feedback can be positive or negative. So in giving negative feedback, um, you want to make sure that it's meaningful um, and that it's effective. So um reprimanding someone or correcting behaviors is something that we all have to do and be a part of but how you do it what you say when you do it and the expected outcome of it can look a little bit different remember to congratulate your team members and say thanks these simple actions will keep them motivated so sometimes when people do the same thing over and over and over again especially in fields of the administrative type it could get a little boring at times. Um, and to kind of keep that motivation and keep that mindset and creativity going, you wanna make sure that you have them know that they're an important contributor, they're an important part, they're you know kind of what makes the organization what it is, what it's growing into, and um, say thank you more than enough. So you can never say thank you or I appreciate what you're doing enough um throughout the journey working in small teams or just in business in general um because you don't want that to become the thing or the reason that those individuals were or decide not to be a part of your organization 
And then finally, um, you want to stay open to comments and new ideas. Um, I, in my weekly meetings with my team, always ask for feedback and any suggestions because I want to know. I know that I don't know it all. Um, it also allows to the flowing of ideas so that they're not only focused on the task or activities at hand only, but other pieces of the business that may not have or be getting as much attention, it'll definitely strengthen the relationship between coworkers because then they can, you know, work together to come up with solutions for any problems or things that they think might be able to be done better. Um, and then finally, I touched on this a little bit about offer constructive feedback, especially around situation when someone doesn't accomplish a goal or makes a mistake. We're all human. We all make mistakes. Even as business owners, we still make mistakes. So setting the tone for situations where mistakes are made is really important and giving the right type of feedback so that that mistake doesn't happen again is key as well. And then using other coworkers so that it creates that team environment and creating, communicating the desire to get feedback along the way helps as well. So that, for example, if you're doing like a big project, instead of having someone do it and complete the entire project and then give the feedback at that time, create points throughout the project where you are another coworker who's maybe in another role or management role in your organization, check in so that you can make sure that that project is on track and fix or kind of deter any um, problems at an earlier stage versus it being completed. And then at that point, you kind of have to unpack or unravel um, any errors. So getting feedback, um, a lot of the technology and software that we shared are great sources that allow you to do that. Um, I would encourage it in real time, whether it's through meetings or through um, emails so that they can to share um, maybe some suggestions or changes that they may think um, will be beneficial to the organization. And finally, if you haven't gotten a chance and you want to know more, definitely take out a moment and subscribe here to our channel as well. You can also check out our Facebook page and Facebook group at T-H-E-N-O-S-A-G-R-P. And if you are continuing to follow us here on the YouTube channel, check out next week where we'll have our final video where we'll be talking about small teams. So we already had a discussion about setting up the small teams. Today, we've talked about delegating for small teams. And then next week, we'll wrap it all together so that you have all the information you need as a small business owner working with small teams. Thanks.